So welcome to the third video in our series on the Queen Mary University of London Theoretical Physics MSc. My name is Matthew Buechan and I'm a member of the Center for Research in String Theory at Queen Mary. Among the various hats that I wear, I am one of the academics who lecture on the Theoretical Physics MSc course. I'd like to tell you a little bit about that, but before I get there, I'd also like to tell you about my research and how my research interests fit into some of the themes that you'll explore during your time here. So when thinking about physics, it's often useful to start with a question. So let me ask you, what do all the following things have in common? The liquid gas phase transition in water, the fractional quantum Hall effect, collisions at the Large Hadron Collider, and quantum gravity in anti de Sitter space. Well, there are surely many right answers to this question, but one is that they are all described by quantum field theory, or QFT for short. QFT is our most successful framework for describing the world around us. It describes all the forces of nature minus gravity. Famously, a particular example of quantum field theory called quantum electrodynamics allows us to measure, or rather compute, the electron anomalous magnetic moment and find agreement with the value of nature to an astonishing degree of accuracy, some, sen some 10 significant digits or more. At the other end of physics in condensed matter, wave functions for systems that exhibit the quantum Hall effect are described by certain special quantum field theories called two-dimensional rational conformal field theories. But beyond what quantum field theory says about physics in the lab or what happens in nature, quantum field theory is really a machine that allows us to explore new phases of matter theoretically, to understand how the rules of physics change with energy scale and to learn even new things about mathematics for example, about topological invariants of knots and links, about modularity, about number theory. And at the same time, quantum field theory allows us to learn about extreme physical environments in which we might a priori think we don't have any intuition, like black holes. And quantum field theory really allows us to go to the limit of what we can conceive. But at the same time, it gives us a language we can use to ask meaningful questions about these topics and get meaningful and quantitative answers back. Now, my primary interest is in the marriage of quantum field theory and symmetry. Quantum field theory is intimately connected with symmetry. Now, symmetry, of course, is a much older idea than quantum field theory. It's a very classical idea that I'm sure you know lots about. The basic idea is that symmetry is a set of operations that we can perform on some system that leave a property of that system that we're studying unchanged. So for example, we can imagine taking a circle, rotating it about its center, well, and we get another circle. So we call that rotation a symmetry. But the story of symmetry in quantum field theory is far richer than the classical picture suggests. In particular, we can have classical symmetries that are manifest when we write down the rules for a quantum system, when we write down a Lagrangian for it. We can also have quantum symmetries that are hidden in the rules that we write down for a system and that only become manifest when quantum corrections are taken into account. We can have classical symmetries that break down quantum mechanically. These are so-called anomalous symmetries. We can have symmetries that are generated by bosonic charges. We can have symmetries that are generated by fermionic charges. We can have symmetries that are generated by objects of various co-dimension. So there's really um, deep and interesting and exciting zoo uh, of symmetries present in quantum field theory. One of their main one of the main motivations for studying symmetry in quantum field theory is that it lets us simplify problems and tame strong interactions. So we get a handle on how theories change with energy scale or even simply insight into how theories that are self-similar under changes of energy scale 
behave. My work has all been concerned with the regime in quantum field theory where perturbation theory breaks down. So that's a regime in which strong coupling is important and apparently all degrees of freedom of a system talk with all other degrees of freedom. And the challenge is to really find patterns in that soup, in that mess. And symmetry, and in particular supersymmetry, which is an example of a fermionic symmetry, allow us to say a lot in those cases. And my recent work was mainly involved in understanding how so-called superconformal field theories, so theories that are supersymmetric and conformal, so invariant under changes of scale and certain slightly more exotic transformations, how those theories are controlled by supersymmetry and how you can compute certain protected observables, observables that you can compute exactly, that show a hidden simplicity in these theories that you might not have thought was present at the outset. You might have thought these theories were just a big mess, but in fact, you can show that oftentimes they're much simpler than you might think. So a closely related idea that I've been interested in is the idea of duality, which is the notion that there are two or more descriptions, often seemingly very different looking descriptions for the same quantum system. So for example, you can have theories in which uh, you have gauge fields, say, coupled to matter on one side of duality, and on the other side, you might not have gauge fields at all. So this is very surprising from a classical perspective. It's a very quantum idea, this idea of duality. It does have an analogy that might be more familiar to you. So for example, when you're studying planar geometry, you often choose the coordinates that you, that you use in order to have something that's best adapted to the question that you're trying to ask. And so for example, when you're studying planar geometry, you may want to, in some cases, use um, Cartesian coordinates. In other cases, you may want to use polar coordinates. And usually you pick the coordinate system to help you best, to, to help you answer the questions you want to answer. And similarly in quantum field theory, when you have quantum system, there's often a particular side of the duality that's useful or most useful for answering the questions you want to study. But to understand how duality really works and how it fits in to the broader space of quantum field theories, it's really useful to step back and try to ask the questions in an arena in which you can get even more answers. And that's led me in recent years, and most recently, to study so-called topological quantum field theories. These are theories that are independent of the metric on the space-time on which they're defined. They only depend on topological properties, so things like the number of holes of the space-time. And I've been studying relations and dualities and more general things than dualities on this space of topological quantum field theories, or TQFTs. And I've been doing this with an eye to try to understand the broader, more global picture of the space of quantum field theories. I've also been looking into and trying to understand more deeply global symmetries in TQFT, because this is, again, an arena in which you can understand everything about global symmetry. You can learn all sorts of interesting things. You can describe very physically and understand very physically the breakdown of various mathematical laws that you've studied in school like associativity. And I'm interested in applying these sort of abstract concepts more broadly in the space of quantum field theories and also to physical systems that are described by TQFTs like the quantum Hall effect, like systems exhibiting the quantum Hall effect. So how is this connected with what you will study at Queen Mary? Well, Queen Mary has a fantastic set of four classes or modules as we refer to them on quantum field theory. I teach the fourth module in that series. It's called Supersymmetric Methods in Theoretical Physics. And in it, you'll learn about supersymmetry, but you'll also learn about much more general concepts like duality, Berry phase, and the renormalization group flow. And you'll learn it through the lens of supersymmetry, which is an important lens because it allows you to say quantitative things about these 
various topics that would be difficult otherwise, and to learn, therefore, something general about quantum field theory. When you, you'll also have the chance to work on research projects, and you'll learn about, you can then learn about more advanced topics like superconformal field theories and relations between quantum field theories in different dimensions. You can learn about applications of symmetries and surface defects to quantum computing and quantum error correction, really a lot of exciting topics that you can study. So let me close by encouraging you to come to Queen Mary. It's a fantastic place with a very vibrant atmosphere, lots of fantastic modules to take, lots of very interesting people to talk to. And perhaps most importantly, it's both a wonderful place to pursue research, but also a fantastic place that really cares about students. And so I hope to welcome you to Queen Mary soon. If you have any questions, please feel free to email me, Al Rodolfo, or one of my other colleagues. I look forward to seeing you soon. Thank you.